from stories across the globe to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A very good evening to you. I'm Sharifa Tahir. Good evening. I'm Stefan Galwis. Let's take a look at the top stories for tonight. The government says quarantine laws were enforced with the aim of maintaining a better civilian life. The CID questions Sajid for having a telephone conversation with Rishad. The debate on the 20th Amendment will take place on the 21st and 22nd. Development projects commence at Maduran Kulia on the President's direction are at last stages. A national program introduced to develop rural economy. Veteran actress Anula Bulat Sinhala passes away. We move on to those and other stories in detail now and we take a look at local news first. The Ministry of Health says that the number of recovered persons after being infected with COVID-19 has increased to 3,385. Meanwhile, 110 patients were reported today from the Divalopitiya COVID cluster. Another 110 infected persons were reported yesterday from the Divalopitiya COVID cluster. The total number of patients of the cluster is 1,899. Out of the total infected persons, 3,385 have recovered with a percentage of 63. 3.22 and 36.53 percent of the patients are undergoing treatment. 50,336 PCR tests have been conducted on the Divalopitiya COVID cluster. 1,791 of them had been infected with the virus, which is a percentage of 3.56. Quarantine curfew is enforced at 19 police divisions in Gampaha. The public transport can operate through those areas and only the students sitting for the GCE advanced level examination can be picked up and dropped by the buses. It can be seen that the public who arrived at trade stalls there are, where there are quarantine curfew were following health guidelines. An employee of the Colombo Municipal Council has been infected with COVID-19. As a result, several sections of the Colombo Municipal Council was temporarily closed for the public. Until the 31st, applications to obtain services from those sections will be accepted at a Sapiri Piercer counter near the main building of the Colombo Municipal Council. Payments on tax, lease and revenue can be made through the banks. Telephone facilities have been provided to prison inmates. They have been provided with the facilities since a decision has been taken not to allow family members to visit inmates due to the pandemic. Special measures are in place to protect the health of the people who are using public transport services. Information about the passengers is being recorded at main bus stands in Colombo. The special Gazette notification on quarantine laws was published yesterday. It has recommended a fine of not more than 10,000 rupees, a six-month imprisonment or both for violators of quarantine laws. The new Gazette notification, which includes maintaining social distance at common places and bearing oral masks, has been issued under the signature of Minister Pavitra Vanyarachi. It has also mentioned on entering business and service places and maintenance of such places. Each person who is entering a service place or a business establishment must wear an oral mask. It has been mandatory to maintain a social distance not less than a metre between two persons. The body temperature of a person should be taken before entering a service place. It has been emphasised that the sufficient facilities to wash hands with disinfected liquid must be provided. A document containing the name, identity card number and contact details of each person must be maintained. The new Gazette notification has emphasised further st strengthened regulations related to travel limits, quarantine and transport activities. Police media spokesman DIG Ajith Rohana says that social distance should be maintained in public transport services and oral masks should be worn. Health guidelines should be followed when conducting discussion and conferences. The Gazette includes details on quarantine, the self-quarantine process, arrival and departure from a place and the quarantine curfew. If a person found violating the regulations in the Gazette notification, such a person can be arrested and produced in court under the Quarantine and Prevention of Disease Ordinance and the Code of Criminal Law. If found to be guilty by a court, such a person will be subjected to a fine of 10,000 rupees and an imprisonment of six months. He said that the Gazette notification is used to protect the public. It's time now for us to take a look at the global situation of the pandemic.
first international no-quarantine flights arrived into Australia, hundreds of New Zealand plane passengers started arriving in Sydney today amid a rapidly falling growth rate in cases at the epicentre of Australia's coronavirus outbreak. Meanwhile, the global coronavirus cases have breached the 39 million mark, recording more than 39.2 million cases, while over 1.01 million people have succumbed to the virus globally. Scientists from Britain's University of Oxford have developed a rapid COVID-19 test able to identify the coronavirus in less than five minutes. Researchers say that it could be used in mass testing at airports and businesses. The university hopes to start product development in early 2021. President Donald Trump defended his handling on the coronavirus pandemic that has killed more than 216,000 people. The number of coronavirus cases in the United States rose by nearly 63,700, bringing the total number of infections to more than 8 million, an increase of more than 1 million in less than a month since the pandemic began. The second highest impact from COVID-19 is still observed in neighbouring India. During the last 24 hours, 60,000 confirmed coronavirus cases have been reported. The total number of infections rose to 7.3 million. Brazil, the world's third most affected country, reported nearly 30,000 new confirmed cases. Infections are hitting 100,000 daily in Europe and the region has just registered the highest weekly incidence of of COVID-19 cases since the beginning of the pandemic, with almost 700,000 cases being reported. The United Kingdom has reported the fifth largest number of deaths from COVID-19 in the world. France issues curfew as daily coronavirus cases reach 30,000. Meanwhile, French healthcare workers across France protested against exhausting working conditions during the coronavirus pandemic and demanded the government to hire more healthcare personnel. The World Health Organization casts doubt on COVID-19 drug Remdesivir benefit. The organization also stated that the drug had little or no effect on COVID-19 patients' length of hospital stay or chances of survival. A clinical trial by the World World Health Organization has found. Meanwhile, the World Health Organization urges Europe to step up controls to save lives. Imposing tighter controls to curb COVID-19 contagion could save hundreds of thousands of lives across Europe as the continent battles an exponential surge in infections. The organization urging the governments to step up swiftly to contain the second wave of the coronavirus pandemic. Welcome back and we continue with more stories here at home. The CID recorded a statement today from opposition leader Sajid Premadasa. The statement has been recorded due to a telephone discussion between the opposition leader and MP Badiuddin after an order was issued to arrest MP Rishad Badiuddin following an order from the Attorney General. It is reported that the statement has been recorded at the apartment complex in Rajagiriya where opposition leader Sajid Premadasa was staying for about one and a half hours. The CID has recorded a statement from the wife of former minister Rishad Badiuddin last night at his residence on Bauda Lokamavating, Colombo. The statement has been recorded in connection with transporting a group of voters from Puttalam to Manar in 221 buses on the date of the presidential election. Accountant of the project to resettle displaced persons, Alagaratnam Manoranjan, has been arrested and the CID has launched an operation to arrest former minister in charge of the subject Rishad Badiuddin and project director Samsuddin Mohammed. The Appeals Court has decided to consider on the 20th the writs petition filed by former Minister Rishad Badiuddin requesting for an interim order preventing him being arrested. The petition is to be heard before Justices Kumudini Vikrama Singh and Sobita Raja Karuna. Meanwhile, an intervening petition has been filed in the Appeals Court requesting to set aside the writs petition submitted by Riyaj Badiuddin requesting for an order 
preventing him being re-arrested by the CID without being considered. The petition has been filed by the director of the Seth Sarana Institution on behalf of His Eminence Archbishop Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit. The appeals court ordered today to take up on the 20th the writs petition filed by Mr. Riyaj Badiuddin, who is a brother of former Minister Rishad Badiuddin, requesting an order preventing him being re-arrested in connection with the Easter Sunday attacks. The petition was heard before appeals court justices Mahinda Samewardana and Arjuna Besekara. Many large-scale development projects at Putla, Madhuran Kulia area are now being implemented. The new projects were launched according to the advice given by President Gotabia Rajapaksa following his recent tour at Madhuran Kulia area. President Gotabia Rajapaksa visited Putlam, Madhuran Kulia area on the 19th of last month. His Eminence Archbishop Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit was present on the occasion. The President arrived at Madhuran Kulia Model School and exchanged views with students and parents. The playground of Mother Ankulia Model School is being renovated by the army. The playground is developed with a proper drain system and laying 2,200 cubes of earth. A new building will be constructed for the unsafe building. The president looked into the problems of farmers in the area. They requested to develop the road network enabling them to transport their harvest conveniently. Accordingly, 4.6 kilometers of the Jivanagama Kajuwatta road is being developed by laying asphalt. One billion rupees will be spent on the development activities. Constructions of the road to Andigama through Madurankulia, Mahakumbu Kadavala on Colombo Putlam Main Road are at last stages. More than 250 million rupees will be spent for the development of 10 kilometer stretch. The President has directed to complete all constructions soon and to vest them with the public. It has been decided today to debate the 20th Amendment to the Constitution on 21st and 22nd in Parliament. It has been decided when the Committee on Parliamentary Business met today. The Supreme Court decision related to the 20th Amendment to the Constitution is expected to be tabled in Parliament by the Speaker on the 20th. The Committee on Parliamentary Business met today under the patronage of Speaker Mahinda Yapape Vardhana. It has been decided to conduct the debate on the 20th Amendment on the 21st and 22nd from 10 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. After the second reading on the 22nd at 7.30 p.m., the committee stage is scheduled to begin. Questions for oral answers will not be presented in Parliament during those two days and the Parliament will not adjourn for lunch. This has been stated by the media release issued by the Communication Department of Parliament. Indian High Commissioner in Sri Lanka, Gopal Bagle, has met Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Discussions were held on several undergoing projects and on sectors where there can be cooperation in future during the meeting yesterday at the Temple Trees. The main objective of the meeting was to have a review of the meeting online between Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and the Sri Lankan Prime Minister. It was revealed that both leaders were happy about the virtual meeting which took place as the bilateral discussion after Mr. Mahinda Rajapaksa becoming the Prime Minister. The Prime Minister pointed out that providing safe drinking water and sanitation are main points to pay attention. The Indian High Commissioner paid his attention on several projects that could be implemented by both countries including water needs of schools, sanitary facilities, harvesting rainwater and on projects to convert waste into fertilizer. Mr. Rajapaksa pointed out that the government has given prominence to treat kidney disease and lack of safe drinking water in certain areas of the country. The Indian High Commissioner expressed his belief that both countries can cooperate in Jal Jeevan Water for Life program of Prime Minister Narendra Modi, which aims to provide drinking water to each house. The drinking water problem in Sri Lanka's dry zone was also discussed. The Prime Minister requested Indian High Commissioner Gopal Bagle to consider the medicine needs 
of the country and to encourage Indian investors to set up facilities for research and manufacture of medicine in Sri Lanka. Former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe admitted that if the IGP does not have power to set up a new police division, according to the police ordinance, the Gazette notification of setting up police financial crimes division is also not legal. He was giving evidence before the Presidential Commission to inquire into political victimization. Notices have been issued on the 21 persons, including former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe and opposition leader Sajid Premadasa, according to a complaint made to the Commission by then addition director of Divinagumab Department and present Director General of Samurdi Bandula Tilakasiri. Giving evidence before the Commission, the former Prime Minister said that the document containing the composition and functions of the Anti-Corruption Committee Office was prepared by a member of the Anti-Corruption Committee, President's Council J.S.C. Veli Amuna, drawing the attention of the former Prime Minister to the Cabinet paper to set up Anti-Corruption Committee Secretariat, the Councillor for the Complainant, said that the Ministry Secretary has paved the way through the Cabinet paper to establish the police unit. However, he said that the Gazette notification to establish the Police Financial Crimes Division has been issued by the IGP, but not by the Ministry Secretary. In reply, the former Prime Minister said that the IGP has the power in that regard. Pointing out again the 55th clause of the Police Ordinance, the Councillor for the Complainant said that the IGP has not been given power to establish a unit under the relevant clause. Chairman of the Commission, former Supreme Court Justice Upali Aberatna, said that action has been taken under a power that is not in the Act. Replying to that, former Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe said that they informed the IGP can establish police divisions. However, he said that the cabinet paper does not mention about setting up divisions and only mentions setting up of an anti-corruption secretariat. Councillors appearing for opposition leader Sajid Premadasa said that Mr. Premadasa has not received notices as a respondent and they came to know about it through media reports. The evidence will be recorded on the 20th again. Meanwhile, Mr. Vikramasinghe also gave evidence in connection with the complaint submitted to the President Commission by former Sri Lankan ambassador to Russia, Udayanga Viratunga. The government has taken steps to launch a national program to build the rural economy. The national program in this regard is being implemented covering all districts to coincide with national economic development. Cabinet ministers, state ministers, chairman of district coordinating committees were briefed today on the national program at the Temple Trees. The program is implemented under four main sectors. Committees will be appointed for social infrastructure, livelihood, local manufacturing industries and for rural infrastructure development. The four committees will study relevant details to uplift rural economy by preparing programs at ministries at provincial, district, regional and rural level to develop the rural economy. The committees are consistent of cabinet ministers, state ministers and chairmen of district coordinating committees and political leaders and state officials in those areas will be appointed to the committee as well. Chairman of the Presidential Task Force for Economic Resurgence and Poverty Alleviation, Basil Rajapaksa, said that the aim of the national program is to take action to utilise funds allocated to develop rural infrastructure by the budget in a more productive manner. It is a proposal presented by the government during the previous election under the Vistas of Prosperity Manifesto. The program is coordinated by the Prime Minister's office under the guidance of President Gotabia Rajapaksa and Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksa. Veteran actress Anula Bulat Singhala has passed away at the age of 73. She was well known for her roles in many strange dramas, teledramas and movies. Family sources said that she had passed away this morning while receiving treatment at the Sri Davardhanapura Hospital. Anula Bulat Singhala was popular for her numerous acting roles in Sri Lankan cinema, teledramas and stage dramas. She was also an accomplished singer. Anula Bulat Singhala is the wife of veteran playwright, poet, stage drama producer and lyricist Lucian Bulat Singhala. Mr. Kumar Siri Hetige has been appointed as the Political Affairs Coordinating Secretary to the Prime Minister. Mr. Hetige, who is a veteran journalist, was the Prime Minister's Parliamentary Affairs Secretary when Mr. Mahindra Rajapaksa was the President between 2005 and 2015. 
Mr Hektige was the Parliamentary Affairs Coordinating Secretary after Mr Mahinda Rajapaksa became the Opposition Leader and the Prime Minister. Underbill figure Arumahandi Janit Madhushank Silva, alias Bodhi Lassi, was granted bail by the Gaul Magistrate in connection with the case of threatening several VIPs, including the President. The Gaul Magistrate delivered the order when the suspect was produced before court today. However, he would continue to be under the detention of the Criminal Investigation Department. During the proceeding, it was revealed in open court that Bodhi Lassi had used cosmetic products which weighed up to 5 kilograms in total while in remand custody at the high security prison in Bursa. The focus of the judicial members fell on how the products were smuggled into a maximum security jail. It is further reported that an overseas travel ban was imposed on the infamous criminal figure. Bodhi Lassi was named as a second suspect in the case filed over the death threats made in public at the Bursa prison against the President, the Defence Secretary and certain high-ranking officers of the prison's department. Ms. MP Kabir Hashim says that all Muslim ministers in the Good Governance Government resigned after the Easter Sunday attacks since Mr. Rishad Badruddin refused to resign from his ministerial portfolio, giving evidence before the Easter Sunday Commission yesterday. He said that support was not given by understanding that they will not be able to visit their villages if they voted for Mr. Rishad Badruddin at the no-confidence motion. Meanwhile, former IGP Pujit Jayasundra also gave evidence before the commission. Former IGP Pujit Jayasundra gave evidence before the presidential commission to inquire into Easter Sunday attacks yesterday for the 11th day. Chairman of the commission questioned him how many meetings were held to discuss about Islamist extremism, similar to the way having discussions with senior police officers by giving more attention to conduct raids on the instructions of the former president. When Mr. Pujit Jayasundra said that he cannot mention a number, the chairman questioned again, stating whether or not a single meeting was held. When a commissioner asked whether the villagers did not charge Katun Kudi community police about activities of Zaharans, the former IGP said there was none. He said that although there were about 14,200 committees. There were instances where there were no results. He added that the destruction was caused since the steps taken were not sufficient. The Presidential Commission decided to postpone re recording of evidence of Mr. Jayasundara since he became unwell suddenly. Thereafter, MP Kabir Hashim has been called to give evidence before the Presidential Commission. The Commission drew the attention of him to the damages of Buddha statues by the groups of Zaharan from t the 23rd to the 26th of December 28 at Randivella, Didulwatta, Hinguloya, Miriskudu Junction in Marvanala area. He was also asked about shooting the coordinating secretary Tazlim of MP Kabir Hashim by a member of the Zaharan's group for giving information to the operation to find explosives in Manatta Villua. When the state councillor asked whether they resigned from ministerial portfolios in behalf of Mr. Rishad Badudin, MP Kabir Hashim said that they resigned on behalf of the government. He said that the government would have collapsed if the opposition won the no-confidence motion. He added that he did not want to protect Mr. Rishad Badudin. Well, that's it for the news this evening. Have a good night. Have a pleasant night.